Good morning, Mr. Leary. Good morning. How are you today, sir? Doing all right. How about you? Ooh, great start to the day. Yep. Getting colder. I'm sleeping better, which is nice. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Showed the house again last night. And of course, it wasn't the right house yet. <laughs> I, think, I think the market took a lull for a couple of days or a week, two weeks. Because I'm starting to get showings on a house of mine that fell out of contract that went vacant, like nothing for two weeks. And all of a sudden I got five showings in two days. Interesting. And then the buyer that fell out reached back out and wants to put an offer back in. And my seller was like, I don't trust them. I caught this, uh, caught this house over in Tango Verde Valley yesterday. Day zero on the market had, um, by the end of the day, had four showings. Mara, how's yours going? I'm sure you <laughs> Uh, well, I've only had a couple of showings, but uh, the first person that showed it they're, said they were sending in an offer, so. I love like, that. Looks like we're doing okay. But yeah, it seems to have slowed down. I have a guy looking and we finally found a couple of places. One's been on, I'm a little worried, for 60 days, and I haven't asked him the whole story, but they already dropped at 30000 <laughs> and we're going to drop our offer by quite a bit too. So we'll see. I mean, it's kind of unusual not to be in a bidding war, but this one's just been sitting. So we'll see. Yeah, we're, I'm noticing there's a big change. Let me close the door here so I don't talk into the hallway. Seems like there might be a little... Hey. <laughs> good morning, Robin. Good morning, Teresa. These red shares at KLP are garbage. They certainly are. I had a client mm -hmm. sit one. <laughs> he, he grabbed the table because he thought he was in a bowl. It's awful. Oh, they're not built for big boys, that's for sure. Yeah, he was pretty good size. <laughs> where'd, you, where'd you get the t-shirt, Dan? I had them made. No shit. Good for you. I'm thinking about having more of them made so people want them. I think once I get like 10 shirts or more, they drop to like $22 a shirt. Cool. Oh, we would all order. I know you would. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I gotta find a, I gotta find a cheaper way of getting them printed, so that we can save more monies. Yeah, they're still they're worth the twenty two bucks, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to Mikey Wining and see what he can do, because I know he's got a guy here in town that printed all of our uh, the. Oh my video. What is it? The red day shirt, not red day shirts. Yeah, they were red day shirts. He did red day shirts, and he did the Mask. the shenanigan shirts that we did for the kickball. But, yeah, and the masks. And the mask, you're right. Good call. Good morning, Miss Melissa. How is how is everyone's head today? Are you feeling oh, more liberty? Better. Good. Now you got some rough week this week, Robin. You really have. So I had a huge weight lifted last night. Yeah. I've been, going, I've been going around and around with this listing agent and Finally, I mean, they're late getting her Benzer response and everything. So she's getting me a Benzer extension. And, and finally, the seller uh, has been doing things, but not communicating with her listing agent. So the seller's already bought the new dishwasher, having it installed for her condo. And she's <laughs> already hired an HVAC um, company and is replacing the whole thing but just didn't happen to think about letting her agent know. So we're over here every single day. The Benzer uh, reply was due Saturday. Last night, I finally get yeah, my technically turn. you guys are into the response time on the buyer's end now. Yes, so, well, when she finally gets me the paperwork tonight or today, yeah. So it's supposed to have been last night. Yeah, so technically, Teresa, if the Benzer response was due Saturday, today is the end of the buyer's response to the Benzer response. Regardless of when forms are delivered, it's a timeline. I know. Believe me. Yes. I know. Yeah. But, but if she sends you a Benzer and just says, 
we're going to do already, that. Yeah, she's already doing the work. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> that's the only two things we had an issue of. Um, and she's already doing it without us responding or her response. I mean, it's just been a little insane. So <laughs> it's very different. Well, good having and that weight lift today. My buyer and my renter are both breathing and sleeping good last night because they've been both calling me and I've been calling them every day and it's just been a little, because my, my guy's moving here from Baltimore, the renter. So I'm, I'm helping my buyer investor buy this condo and I've already got him a renter moving in at the end of the month. We're closing next week. So yeah, it's, it's been a little crazy, but things are looking better now. I was able to sleep last night. <laughs> I love it. Good morning, Miss McBroom. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning. Wait, no, it's morning. <laughs> That's what I said. I had a bit of a snafu on a contract. Just we'll share in case it could help someone. So our um, buyers, you know, remind your buyers not to change anything in the process of buying. So on one contract, uh, they thought that they could, you know, pay our price and close. Yeah, like next week, when a twenty seventh. So their agent calls and says, "Oh, he quit his job. Now they have to sell their house and close on it in Iowa before they can close on yours." And I'm like, my client moved out this week. <laughs> so they pushed us back like three weeks. So not great. Thankfully, he has already got a place to live and he talked to his mortgage company, yada, yada. But I always remind my client, you know, don't buy anything big. Don't change jobs. Definitely don't quit your job when you're buying a house. So anyway, that had never happened to me before. So yeah, I don't care how much you hate your job. Stay there until you get your keys. Yeah. That is insane. Crazy, crazy. Oh. <clears throat> Dan, my buyer was talking to you last night. We might have to delay closing on that one. Or not. What happened? The one I talked to you last night about, my buyer. Yeah. We might have to delay closing on that one. Okay. Did we communicate with the seller's agent already? No, not yet. I was just texting the, um, the lender this morning. Yeah. Um, so I asked her, you know, like, Hey, if he can get you all this information, if he can get you the payoff and all that stuff, and she's like, it has to be done today. I'm like today. So if it's not today, then we're not going to close on time. And she's like, probably not. Oof. I'm like, great. So it has to be today. I don't know if that's possible today. No, well, push your, push your point. I've seen amazing things happen when you tell them those deadlines has to be done kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Miss Renee. Good morning. Good morning. Look at that. Wendy's got her camera on and everything. She's ready to rock and roll. A lot of people have cameras on today. It's good. It's almost like we talk about this all the time. So all right, let's let's talk about the weekly conversation, and that's the scripting around videos and posts and, and trying to gain engagement through social media and stuff like that. Who's done something? Put up a video of my house. I also did a Facebook ad for it. I got three leads the first day. Um, wow. They answered their phone, so I need to email them. I left messages when I could. Something. I'm trying. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I totally, I totally botched the fact that one of my two listings this weekend, I got them sold too fast, like literally had offers on them. And we were just waiting for the cycles. Didn't even get Facebook leads on them. No Facebook posts or anything. And the sellers are like, we don't need to post it at all. We've already got it sold. And I want to be like, it's not for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then we had Teresa had tested an open house on one of them and the, the owner stopped by the house. He's like, well, we're pretty satisfied with the offers we got. And I don't think we need to do the open house tomorrow. Same thing. It's not for you. That's the thing is I, I negotiated in the contract side of it. And we had this conversation is if the house does sell and you have an open house scheduled, talk your sellers into letting the open house run because you put some time, effort, some resources usually into getting ready for that open house, don't shortchange your efforts. Every time I've done an open house at one that's already been changed on the MLS though, I've gotten no traffic. Yeah. 
I made that mistake like three times, two or three times. And I think I had one drive by once. It was a gated neighborhood though. And then one that was like in the middle of town and I got nobody. I didn't know how possibly useful doing an open house in a gated community was because, so I asked the agent, you know, how they normally do it. And you guys probably already know, I mean, they have to call you, right? To, to click in usually. So you get everybody's phone number. <laughs> Yeah, map. it's actually nice because you get everybody's phone number. Right? So as long as you capture them every time they call you and say, let us in, we're not. Because you put a sign out by the box. And anyway, I used to think it was a big deal, you know, to have one in a gated one. And then I just put a little sign to call me to be let in. So that's what I do. Yeah, you definitely. say, okay, just for my reference, um, you know, your, your name, please. <laughs> and then I'll let you in. <laughs> Yeah, that was the one issue I had. I had one that was in a super busy neighborhood. I think I had like 20 people go through in like three hours. And that was the one thing is I couldn't keep track of who was who. And I, some of them signed in, some of them just put their name down. So I, yeah. But you're only supposed to do that via call. You're not supposed to do it via text, right, Dan? Right, you can't have the retention yeah. of the number. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that way it just it protects you and it's it's the agreement you have with the HOA or the gated community association where you're not publicly advertising the gate code or giving it to them in a sense where you can just hit the code and go in. We don't know what kind of nefarious people are out there doing open houses just to find that's one of the one of the things we need to think about is the safety of ourselves and our clients and the clients of those houses that we are representing. Because if someone comes in an open house and sees some really nice artwork on this house and they kind of find out that the sellers are out of town for the weekend. So then what's the rule? When you're doing a gated community, mm -hmm. put a sign up on the gate or it's good having an open house sign right next to the gate box that says open house and then put a little piece of paper, clip it on a, in a plastic sleeve, if you will, call Mara for gate code, Mara's phone number. Or just put the gate code, yeah, okay. Yeah, do not put the gate code, yeah, because that will get you in trouble. That's actually an ADRE violation too. Wow. Okay. One, of, one of our agents got called out on it. It's actually a better way of doing it. Wouldn't it be, usually Usually, there's a, a button in the house to let, the, uh, let somebody in. Sometimes, I have the older communities don't have that phone system. Like I've never seen system. that in a house and I've done five or six in gated communities. Yeah, I know what Larry's talking about. There's a little call pad on the, usually in the kitchen that you can hit a button and opens it up. That way you're not giving the code out. Yeah. This is true. That is the safest way, unfortunately. <laughs> the other thing is HOA sometimes will have codes already ready that they can just go into their system between 10 and two, this code will work. And then that's the code people give out. And then at two o'clock it expires and it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's nice when that happens. <laughs> I like that because it is scary. Like you said, if people are actually just casing the neighborhood and then they pull up, oh, I've got the gate code and come back. I mean, that's, it is scary. There's a neighborhood off of Valencia and I-10 that if owners let them know that they'll actually just leave the gates open during open house times too. Yeah. Yes. Something to consider. Good stuff to talk about. I love it. You guys are so bright in the morning. I love it. I got moving heads. I got some energy this morning. This is what I feed off of. That's good. <laughs> All right. Yesterday in negotiations, we really kind of focused in on the calls to the agents on the other side. I think that's super important for us to start doing now is I'm still not getting much in the way of communication from other agents on listings. And I want to see you guys be as successful as possible. So let's start making those phone calls. You're calling the other agent. You're trying to get as much information as possible as a buyer's agent, right? Head nods, yeah, everyone, good stuff. And if you're a seller's agent, you're trying to get, a, get away with giving no information, right? Now, how do we do that tactfully? Well, for me, when I'm taking buyers to a property, um, I'm always, every call, every time I'm going out, I'm calling the other agent. You know, and, and sometimes they're like, well, everything's on the listing. 
but I call them anyway because they'll invariably have something that has just happened that day about the house to inform you that can be good information. So it's always a call, hey, is there anything else about the house you can tell me that's not in the listing or something that you know, may have changed here within the last couple of days or anything I can expect when I get there or anything you want to tell me that's a, that might be a plus for the buyer? Um, just you know, talk to you know uh, Susie Hall long last night about the house I was showing at six o'clock last evening. It's like, hey Susie, what can you know? What what can you tell me that and it's not in the listing? Um, just to establish some rapport with them, you know, get your name out to them. Um, like I said, they ended up with three or four people in there yesterday, so she's you know, there's not that much separation. But um, uh, you know, again, she had a few things about the house to let me know about and what switch to hit where and what not to hit because a couple of doorknobs had tape on them, not to turn that lock and just little things. But it's an opportunity for them to sell to you as the agent, but they'll almost invariably have something, you know, oh, they just did this or they just did that or we just found out that this and just those kinds of things. So. Um, so it's, Hey, I'm just, you know, going to plan to beat the, you'll see me off the, you know, see my name come up on the super box around six o'clock. That's when I'm going to show the property, but I'm just checking in with you to see if there's anything else in addition to the listing that you might tell me about the house. Um, I've found every time I've done that, there's been some good follow-up communication, right? That, you know, some those agents, sometimes half of them will actually call me, go, how'd it go? Yeah. Cause they, they see me in there and then they, you know, so on. They'll call me and go, hey, how'd it go? After you've had a conversation with them. I've never gotten a call from an, from someone when I've just taken someone to a house and opened the super box. I've done that, obviously, a few times on short notice. Um, but uh, most of the time, I will reach out to the other agent when I'm going to show the house. I always do. I had a buyer consult yesterday, and they were like, well, if you have time, we can, we can go see stuff right now. And so it was like, yeah, I'll call the agents on the way. So I went and showed them three homes, and two of those agents that I called uh, texted me later and just asked how it went because they had they both had offers on them so they wanted to know if we were going to put anything in and of course that's the key question in today's market do you have any offers yet <laughs> that's yet can i change your guys's question there sure what offers are you currently negotiating there you go follow-up question what offers are you con currently negotiating yeah, I'm gonna blow your mind with a second one. What's the highest offer? <laughs> what would you say to that, Larry? Larry, what offers are you currently negotiating? I have three of them. Perfect. And, and What's the highest I, offer? Well, I'm, uh, you know, my my client uh, is going to be reviewing these, and I'm, you know, we have we're cl we're close to list price. Okay. So if you were me writing this offer, how, how would you make it look? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So you're not supposed to do that though. You're not supposed to ask. You're supposed to ask. Your job is to get the information. Yeah. And as, re as real estate agents, we're not supposed to do that. Not supposed to give out that info. Yeah, oh, but sometimes they do. <laughs> I fully understand that you're protecting your seller not wanting to give away the, the farm at that. But let me ask you, in the event that my client was able to bring a better offer, wouldn't that be benefiting your seller? Yeah, okay. So, you know, uh, you're going to have to you're gonna have to get above list price. <laughs> How far? <laughs> I, got, I got told yesterday, extremely aggressive. <laughs> now, in my world, extremely aggressive is like 20 grand. Is that what it you're might have been though. Honestly, I think the house was, un I, I don't, I think it was probably easily worth 10, 10, if not 15 more. So it wouldn't surprise me if they had one for 20 above. So let's try that out. Like this, these are how you get more information is by being crafty and having those calls. So ring, ring, Cindy, you're about to take a listing live tomorrow. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Miss Cindy. My name is Big Dan Caldwell. I'm a realtor at Keller Williams. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. I'm taking my client over to check your house out on Main Street. I see that you guys are asking for all offers to be submitted with the response date of Monday. What offers are you currently negotiating? Um, well, um, we are currently um, negotiating offers around this price. Okay, fantastic. What's important to your seller? Um, probably a... Hmm... 
not to say a quick close, but maybe a closing on time. Well, of course, we try to close on time, but what yeah. kind of time are we looking at? <laughs> um, I don't know, the next 30 to 45 days. Okay, is sooner or later better? They can do, honestly, they can do both. Okay. Like, time isn't a huge essence, but you know. Well, if you were me, what, what would you make the offer look like to win? Your best and highest offer. Okay, what's your highest offer so far? Around me, probably around this price. So around this price, what does that mean? Around this price. Okay, is that above this price? Um, I'd have to go review them right now because um, we are receiving some at the moment. Okay, fantastic. Now, if I, if, if I were to send you an offer that was super aggressive, what kind of things would your seller want to see? Probably um, no concessions, um, but we are offering a warranty, so I will, we are doing that. Okay. Now, what happens if the home doesn't appraise? We will have to probably reevaluate. Okay. Are, do you have any fear about it appraising over list price? No. None at all? <laughs> uh, I think it depends on what above list price would be. Okay. How far have you thought out? Um, I, I haven't thought out aggressive, like, more than 50, but so just going by the comps. Okay. Well, fantastic, Miss Cindy. I look forward to working with you and we can get this deal closed up together. If, the, uh, if my clients love it, we'll be sending you an offer. I'll text you as soon as I send it, all right? All right, sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Did I get any valuable information? Yes. Even though she tried like hell not to give me anything. <laughs> Did okay. I ask the same question five different times? Yes. I already answered your question, Dan. <laughs> but you didn't. You didn't think no, you did. Because no. I asked it a different way. Right. So as a seller, Dan, then how would you handle that? Go ahead and give me a call. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. This is Dan Caldwell, Keller Williams, Southern Arizona. How are you? I'm doing well. This is Cindy with uh, Keller Williams, and I was calling regarding your uh, listing over on 123 Main Street. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful house, getting tons of traffic. How are you guys? Yeah, I'm sorry. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing well, thank you. So um, I just wanted to call and see, you know, where you guys are at on this home. Are you guys currently still receiving offers on the home? Yes, so we're asking that all offers be received be sent to us by 7 p.m. and we'll respond Monday by 5. Wonderful. All right. Well, um, then I wanted to see if um, what would be like considered um, a competing offer at this point with you guys receiving offers. I'm seeing offers all over. Just give your clients the best chance to win. And what would that look like? Are we talking about possibly going above and beyond like list price? Yeah, let your, let your clients put their best offer out there and I would gladly present it to my seller. So what would be like a competing offer so my clients can kind of um, think about, you know, what they want to submit? Yeah, just keep it clean and give your, your offer the best chance to win. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Dan. Bye. <laughs> Right. Now, now you don't feel like I'm just pushing you off, but I am, I am completely shut down. You're not getting any information. Right. Keep it clean. Give your, your clients the best chance to win. I had kind of an opposite thing last night. I was telling you, Dan, we were going to come in low because there's no offers. This house has been on for 60 days. And I asked the guy, I go, what do you think, you know, they would accept? And he's like, oh, I don't know. Cause that's at 229. He goes, 
oh, you know, send me some. And so at first he's like, oh, I can't speak for my client. But in like 30 seconds, he goes, oh, send me over something for 200, 210. I was like, <laughs> okay. It only took a few seconds and he gave it up, you know? I mean, he doesn't know what they're going to respond, but I did. I found it hilarious. So like, you'll oh, get that all the time. Just ask. They could, you know, people yeah. end up spewing sometimes. Don't ask just once. I like to ask what would make our offer more enticing than the others you've received? Oh, that's a good one. I like that. What would make our offer a little bit more enticing than the others? There's also the blunt one. Oh, I'm sorry, Cindy, go ahead. I stepped on you. It's okay. No, I was just asking Renee and what would they say? Um, like I had one that said, um, shortened inspection period was something that nobody had uh, put in yet um appraisal if they are able to cover in the event that it doesn't appraise appraisal contingency i will say that those are the two things that i saw on my offers that were coming in that are that shine to my sellers yep so cash what, was, what were those two what were those two things again is the shortened inspection period and cash over appraisal on page eight showing buyer willing to pay blank amount over appraised value in the event that it appraises short not to exceed purchase price. Yeah, that's a big one. I won two with that alone. And the thing is I told my sellers and because I you know, I do deep comps on my houses and make sure that we're solid and I'm overpricing a little bit, just, you know, I'm, I'm edging out the market. Just like case in point, 189. They want to be at 189. I was like, there's a house around the corner that's identical. It's sold for 182 last month what makes your seven thousand dollars more valuable they're like well we, we let's do 187. i was like, okay what happens if it doesn't appraise well we'll reevaluate well i originally took the listing at 169 Oof. and it, they did some work on the house they upgraded some things so they can get more money out of it they put 20 grand into it to get 20 grand out of it which is whatever it's okay it's your call but then we got cash offers, finance offers, all these things. And they keep seeing these offers for 190, 195, 197, 200, 205, 27, 217. Yeah, 217, 30 grand over. It was ridiculous. And they're all excited about these offers. I'm like, oh, hold on. What happens if it doesn't appraise? If it appraises at 182, you're back to 182. It doesn't matter what their purchase price was. So that, that right there cut out a lot of the super aggressive pricing which looks great on paper, but it doesn't fly. The one offer that stood out amazingly was a, a guy from Long and I, I called him and accommodated, you know, you know, accommodated? No, complimented him on his offer. And I told him, hey man, I really appreciate your offer. It was one of the strongest ones out there. If you would like to be in a backup position, I'll keep it there. And their offer was 207, no asking for closing costs, shortened inspection period, 3,000 over appraised value in the event that it appraised light, a longer response than the time we were asking for. So everything was filled out cleanly, everything, even the seller's portions of the information, everything was filled out, ready to sign, and it gave just everything possible. And my sellers were debating over that versus the cash offer. And I told them, I was like, if they pay 3,000 over appraisal and it appraises at 183, you get 186 and you're still a thousand dollars less than the cash offer. And you have to wait an entire month to get there. Plus you're paying another mortgage payment. So Oops. you want to tell your clients to still compete with the cash offers is to make them realistic. You know, how, how easy and how fast you can do it because cash isn't always king in, in the, the sale to buy because it might be a timeline thing. If they don't want to close quickly and they want that extended escrow and they don't care, then maybe throw some of the, the earnest money as refundable to the seller instead of coming over, over top of the appraisal price. Dan, another quick point. We've been being told by a lot of economists, um, and I think it was a Bloomberg one that came out yesterday that feels like we have hit the top of the market and we probably need to caution our seller because I think we've all been probably pushing prices if we can. Um, 
but I think we do need to start to be a little cautious there. Well, you know, on the other side of that, I, I, I hear that and I agree, but, and I think that we're going to feel that here, especially going into the holiday season, that we are going to slow down. There's no question about it, but it's the lack of inventory that's holding mm -hmm. prices up. It, that, you know, that, that's not going to change. And the interest rates, interest rates and the lack of inventory are what's holding, it's what's driving the prices and it's also what's going to hold the prices up. And that same economist said, I mean, in, Arizona, in, in, Florida, and Texas are still the top three states. So I don't yeah. think we're going to be like everybody else, but. Yeah, I was going to say, because I know other states are already starting to get the inventory back up. And I don't see that happening here. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. In this market, what I'm yeah, referring I, to is this market. About market right now. I'd be more so concerned that the buyers would be paying too much now <laughs> than. Yeah. Yeah, that was her other point. The prices are so high that they've kind of leveled out the low interest rate. It's kind of the same money that it was. And now it's just. Oh, that's to be completely honest, I feel like there's some sellers out there that are throwing <laughs> lipstick on a pig right now. Yeah, they are. Uh, my aunt's talking about selling now, so. Right? I'll just, oh my God, the market's so hot, we should sell the house. You're missing half of it, Susan. It's got to be at worth at least 225 The neighbor sold their house for 300 Susan, your husband blew up the garage. <laughs> well, in my neighborhood, they're fairly consistent, though, so. I mean, she'd be making over a hundred grand off of what she owes. So. And then she would go buy something that's fifty grand overvalued. No, she would. She said she would rent for six months or so. Right, six months of rent. An average rent in her area is fifteen hundred dollars a month. So you're looking at another ten thousand dollars. So you're ten thousand dollars in holding fees. Yeah, but she she would make a hundred. Well, approximately a hundred and twenty off of it right now. Same, like that's that's easy math. That's easy. Yeah, she that's would still be and let the market kind of yeah. slide. I'd rent for a year. Good. Yeah, yeah, no, she's talking about it, so. Yeah, so. And I've kind of given her a warning. Well, inventory always increases in January, so if you're going to list, you should do it, like, soon. But she doesn't want to do it while she's living here, so. Now, I don't think the January, yeah, the inventory increases, but I don't think we're going to get an increase in January that takes us back to, to, to close to being normal market. I still think we're going to be I, in yeah, inventory I, I, I shortage. I think there will be an increase, but I don't think it's going to be the I don't think the it's going to be significant at all. Really? Okay. I mean, you know, wait, usually what is it every year? About 800 houses come on the market in January? Jason said it normally doubles. More than usual. Doubles. More yeah. than usual. 800 yeah. above the normal number. So maybe close to 2,000 will come on in January. How quickly will they go? Yeah. Three months. Three months supply. Well, it kind of depends on what happens with interest rates and stuff, which I mean, I don't think. Interest gonna... rates aren't going anywhere. They've already talked about holding interest yeah. rates at this number for two to three, two to election, five years. Yeah. The election could have some effect on that. I don't think that's going to happen either. I don't think it will, but it's possible. An economy that is addicted to low interest rates. And even if the economy was back to full steam with everyone back to work, COVID not bearing, even if all of those lined up perfectly, you raise interest rates, you would create a recession in that fact because the economy has become so addicted to low money. We have taken profit out of financing, which is okay because it's increasing consumerism. So now banks, if you notice, banks are getting into more products, not just financing. So you'll see a lot more products being pushed on people like your life insurance, your health and welfare insurance, job ex insurance, all these things that you can tack onto a loan. That's a flat profit builder. Look at the car business. You buy the car and then what? You go into finance and they try to sell you all kinds of shit. Yeah, warranty and this and that. They make money on the warranty. They make money on the financing. They make money on the service. It's not the product itself, the main product. It's everything they can tack onto it. So we'll start seeing that, but that's where good we talk about these things so you can hedge out the conversations with clients further on down the line when we when we hear them say i think i want to sell now it's a great time this is where we start those conversations and have logical conversations and then be able to invoke their emotions to get them to do something about it what are you waiting for you can make a hundred thousand dollars let's go and i can make some money too it's a win-win right renee absolutely well, it is 8.33, my friends. Yes, and can we chat later?
we can chat. I can call you when I'm leaving this office. I got a meeting until 9.30 or so and then head back to the north side. Does that work? Sorry, so what time? Around 9.30. Yes, please. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. Does anyone have any listings going live this weekend? Mara, I'm not sure. Cindy? Mara's yeah, supposed to have tomorrow. Cindy goes live tomorrow. Are you running an open house this weekend, Cindy? You know what? That's one thing I need to, um, we didn't settle that with my seller. It's okay, really if anyone has a new listing this weekend that wants an open house, let me know. I want to get another one. Let's do it. All right, we'll talk soon, my friends. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. I'll let you know about the church and I find out more information about them.